Hello, welcome to Daily Prayer today for February 10th, 2021. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy never cease, fresh as the morning and sure as the sunrise. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all glory, we give you thanks that through the gift of baptism we have been crucified with Christ and united with him in resurrection. By the power of your Holy Spirit, let our lives proclaim the good news that we are dead to sin and alive to you. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Our readings for today are 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6 through 4, 18. So just kind of uh, part two of 1 Thessalonians. Paul continues, But Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought us the good news of your faith and love. He has told us also that you always remember us kindly and long to see us, just as we long to see you. For this reason, brothers and sisters, during all our distress and persecution, we have been encouraged about you through your faith. For we now live, for we now live, if you continue to stand firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see your, you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Finally, brothers and sisters, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you learn from us how you ought to live and to please God, as in fact you are doing, you should do so more and more, for you know that instructions you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from fornication, that each one of you knows how to control your own body and holiness and honor, not with lustful passion, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one wrongs or exploits a brother or sister in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, just as we have already told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God did not call us to impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever rejects this rejects not human authority, but God, who also gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now concerning love of the brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anyone write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do love all the brothers and sisters throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, beloved, to do so more and more, to aspire to live quietly, to mind your own affairs, and to work with your hands, as we directed you, so that you may behave properly towards outsiders and be dependent on no one. But we do not want to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
So Paul continues to speak to the Thessalonian church, um, and he is excited. Remember, he was not sure about the Thessalonians. He had only spent a few, uh, just uh, about a month or so there in Thessalonica, had started up the church, and the persecution was so heavy on him specifically that he took off. He, um, he was unable to stay. In fact, I believe they asked him to leave just for his uh, concern for his safety. Uh, so he doesn't know what has what it's been like. So he has sent Timothy. He had tried to go multiple times. He sends Timothy. Timothy comes back, gives this great glowing report, and he's ecstatic. He's so um, encouraged by the fact that they are continuing to do well. And so he's giving these um, continued words of, of um, encouragement and, and guidance. He reminds them again, um, something that he wants them to do is continue to work, right? There's, there's an emphasis in this letter about um, being diligent with your hands, you know, just continuing to work, supporting yourself, and uh, being able to care for others. Um, so that's, that's an interesting sort of element, and especially as we bring in uh, Second Thessalonians, we'll see why that is, is an interesting thing to, to, for him to bring up here. Um, he thanks God for all of their love, right? And, and he implores them to live this life pleasing to God, and very much this is not falling into sort of the traps and the, the assumptions of the pagan world. Don't fall into two things um, he lifts up is sort of sexual purity and also economic um, justice, uh, maybe not purity. Um, but the, these are two things, right? So abstain from those sexual practices and specifically he's going to be thinking more about um, worshiping the the Greek and Roman gods through prostitutes. There's that sort of element, but also that there should be just this sort of like, there are proper ways to use sex. God has given it to us as a, a gift. Use it in that way, right? So there's that element. And then there's also, you have, um, you have, uh, not to, uh, no one wrongs or exploit a brother or sister, um, because uh, the, Lord is an avenger on all of these things. Um, so striving for holiness, striving for this, this uh, life that is not like everybody else's, um, a life that is, is pure. Uh, again, this is not out of some obligation to law so that we might earn salvation, but this is a, a joyful reaction to that. Loving brothers and sisters, he says, you're, you're good, you know, you're fine um, to, to love your siblings in Christ. Um, everybody around, they know this, and so he's not worried about that. Um, and then he leaves them, and this leads into the last chapter of the First Thessalonians chapter 5, um, about future things, right? So the concern right now is those who have died. So part of what's going on is... Um, Especially early on in Paul's career, there was the, the very much this sort of focus on the coming of Christ, right? The, the um, Christ coming again, this apocalyptic sort of expectation. Um, now, he himself was very nuanced with this, that, that there's this, yes, we're waiting for this coming of Christ, but that doesn't mean that we stop working now, that we, that we just keep on. And maybe he was not able to express that second nuance to them because it seems that these Thessalonian letters are a lot around that. It's about apocalyptic things and also sort of like that, that again, that laziness or that, that being willing to work with our hands. Um, so first thing is, I don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, and I'll go to this, about those who have died so that you may not grieve as others who have not hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you in the word of the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will no, by no means proceed those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangels, call with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. What's going on there is um, there was this concern. If 
the, this idea of this apocalyptic coming of Christ, that Christ is going to return soon, right? And we're all going to go and meet him. Great. And then time goes on and people die. Well, what happens with them, right? They're, they're dead, right? They've gone uh, maybe in that at sort of Greek Roman thought that they have gone to the dead, right? They're just, they're in the land of the dead. Um, even in the Jewish thought, uh, you know, maybe they're in Abraham's bosom, but they're not here. They, they don't exist in this plane anymore. They don't exist in this world. So what happens to them, right? Have they lost out because they have died? And Paul says, no, 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 no. That's not what we're talking about here. They, by no means, will be left out of this apocalyptic uh, and, and um, joyful returning, this great and, and wonderful day of the Lord. Um, and he uses imagery of a returning victorious king. Commonly, if a king of a, of a city comes back from some war, some escapade, some whatever, right, especially victoriously, they come in and there's great tr uh, trumpet sounds and everybody's excited and the town comes out to meet them, right, um, and comes and, and, and welcomes this victorious king who is coming into uh, back to his city, right? Um, this is the same imagery that Paul is using here for Christ, that Christ, instead of coming along the road, is coming down from heaven, um, not to lift us up into heaven, right, as is the popular kind of understanding. But if we look scripturally, it's very much Christ is coming back down to the, to the physical world, right, the, the world that we see around us. Christ has come now as the victorious king, and we, as as royal subjects, as loyal subjects, come and meet him, not on the path, but in the air. And those who have died in Christ, guess what? They get first priority. They will be risen again. Again, this is deeply rooted in Paul's um, faith and understanding of, of bodily resurrection, which is something that the um, the Pharisees, the, that was a famous, uh, one of the the things that we know was a difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees was that the Pharisees believed in a bodily resurrection, looking at the Old Testament, saying this is the way it, it is, right? There's this physical resurrection of God's people who have died, um, those who have died in Christ, and they meet Christ in the air. And then we, he says, all those who are alive at the time of this coming, again, you notice he is expecting this to happen very soon. Um, we also will be caught up in the air with Christ to, to sort of escort him down to the world where he will then reign, um, where this, this peaceful reign of Christ w will happen, the fulfillment of all of those that, that, that God will make, um, all of his enemies, his footstool, all that sort of stuff, right? The, the final reign of Christ as Messiah, as King, uh, when that happens, we'll be caught up in the air. And those who have died in Christ, they're not left out of that. They are a part of this. So that will lead us to some more conversation about apocalyptic end time sort of things. Um, what are we looking forward to in Thessalonians chapter 5? Let's go ahead and look at our devotion for today. We are invited to join in what God is already doing in our communities. This gentleman with a very nice bow tie is the Reverend Stephen Lewis. Speaking, a, speaking during a Facebook Live event on the topic Courageous Leadership Matters, the Reverend Stephen Lewis, presented, pre, president of the Forum for Theological Exploration, told host the Reverend Dr. Lee Hinson Hasty that in many ways our future is rooted in the labors of those who came before us. I stand on the shoulders of those who went before me, Lewis told Hinson Hasty, Senior Director for Theological Education Fund's Development for the Community on Theological Education, Cody, of the Presbyterian Foundation. It's not about my sense of purpose, but I am the answer to my ancestors' prayers and dreams. We are connected to a long history. Together with Matthew Wesley Williams and Dory Grin and Go Baker, Lewis is the author of the 2020 book, Another Way, Living and Leading Change on Purpose. In general, he said, 
Leadership is the practice of a community, not an individual, in shaping a more hopeful future for the community. Management is about supervision, said Lewis, who was a banker relationship who was a banker, relationship manager, and a project analyst before earning his Master of Divinity at Duke Divinity School. Leadership is about organizing and mobilizing a community toward a vision. Courageous leadership, he said, involves knowing that something is at stake greater than and beyond our own self-interest. The goal, of course, is to help bring about the biblical vision of a new heaven and a new earth, and it's about who we are and how we relate to the Creator, Lewis said. The kind of leadership Lewis describes is something we can all play a role in, and we can all play a role in our community that's exercising courageous leadership, he said. That's exactly the kind of leadership that matters right now, Hinson Hasty responded. There's a mutuality, and I am my brother's and sister's keeper. I, I am because we are. It's less hierarchy and more circular, Henson Hasty said, and the circle grows. Congregations and pastors have to recognize that it's not about what we do on a Sunday, Lewis said. It's about the ways we go about life and do life together. God has been calling us from our ancestral past until now, constantly pricking our conscience to join what the Eternal is already doing in our communities, Lewis said. However, it's difficult to do that when you are on the hamster wheel doing all the things that are vying for your attention. Leadership and communities, they're exhausting, he said. They are not designed for our own flourishing. How do we stop the business as usual and take a break? COVID-19 has helped some people do just that. In the midst of tragedy and failure of leadership and loss, it's also a moment when the globe has stopped its feverish pitch. He said, it's an opportunity to ask the deeper questions about life and relationships. Why do we gather? What are trying what are trying to do? What are we trying to do as people of faith? It's also an invitation to do some self-reflection on what God is calling us to do at this moment and how the Spirit is inviting us to co-conspire with her. The normalcy we were accustomed to didn't work for everyone, he said. Courageous leadership invites us to take risks, and risk comes as a result of facing the opposition. The powers that be, the status quo we all participate in. Many of us already benefit from the way social structures are currently set up. Our livelihoods depend on them. But in terms of bravery, it's also about overcoming. And there are voices we need to hear. Voices of people overcoming trauma and fear, including those overcoming systems of privilege, male ways of being, and heteronormative ways of living out life, Lewis said. Courage, he noted, comes from the same root word as heart. How do we exercise our heart for people, Lewis asks? A care for the larger community that requires empathy, and that always lands on emotional intelligence. Do we have the emotional intelligence to lead right now? Do we have the heart to see empathetically what we must do right now, even when our people are not quite ready? We know that courageous leadership really does matter in government, in higher education, and in religious life. By Mike Ferguson, editor of Presbyterian News Service. Now let's join our hearts together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. We lift our voices in prayer and praise, Holy God, for you have lifted us to new life in Jesus Christ, and your blessings come in generous measure. Especially we thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ for all. The wonder and beauty of creation. The love of family and friends. Opportunities for faithful service. Particular blessings of this day.
People of God, for what else do we give thanks? Oops. We pray for courageous leadership. We also lift up Richard Copley of the Presbyterian Mission Agency and Yvonne Collar of the Presbyterian Mission Agency. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, thank you for what you are doing. Bless the children and their families and bring your peace and love to all your people in your holy name. Amen. We hold up before you human needs, God of compassion, for you have come to us in Jesus Christ and share our lives so that we may share his resurrection. Especially we thank, pray for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. peace, and justice in the world. Those in whom we see Christ's suffering. Those who offer Christ's compassion. Particular concerns of this day. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Beverly, who had a mild heart attack and is recovering with medication. For Jim, who has been moved to a care facility that is better able to provide the 24-hour care that he needs. For Rose and her family, a co-worker of Cindy's who has gone into hospice. The family of Robert, Sandy's younger brother, who died last week. For John, a friend of Bill's who's discovered that he has cancer. For Pat, a friend of Debbie's, who had surgery for lung cancer and is doing well. For Emma, Suzanne's 17-year-old cousin who's facing major surgery. And Mike, Bob's brother, who had open surgery this week. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, be our starting point and our haven and accompany us in this day's journey. Use our hands to do your creation and use our lives to bring others the new life you give this world in Jesus Christ, Redeemer of all. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for Daily Prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA, 2018 edition. Our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, and our devotion came from the Mission Yearbook of the Peace USA. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.